פני היה יחכוכי, שוכו היה יחכ חרוז, דעשה יתו עסקו הדעת ושוך עתל עתקי. יאו שוכו היה דעשה יתו עסקו הדעת ושיוך עתל עתקי. I was wondering how you say uh, I can't do something or I couldn't do something. So say for example, uh, I couldn't shoot it. It was in the middle of the road, so I couldn't shoot it. Uh, you're just talking like theoretically or legally? Uh, well, it's legally. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Verb mode, aya, yadu, kagishawu yejinei, yisitinge yata, un, un, ye un, kesi un hook, kesi un hook, kadasa, yinde 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 yadu a, kes a de uka unia. Uh, okay. so, there's no like from as far as I could tell there's no positive form of that but that's always how you would say couldn't do it and it gets a little complicated if you want to say this one is not too bad because you say but you would change to so it'd be an underlined K and that would be I can't shoot it, I couldn't shoot it. And, the, and we, would, we would gather that by context. So again, I think it doesn't conjugate for time, just for event. But anytime you want to say couldn't do it, can't do it, it's going to be one of these really long constructions. The first part is the, the pre-verb, which is Then you're going to get the verb itself, which is in what we call a potential mode which is pretty, that's a little complicated, but basically you're gonna have the irrealis, you're gonna have the conjugation prefix, you're gonna have a plus I classifier, you're gonna get the, the relational suffix type of thing at the end, then you're gonna have yeah at the end. And so it's actually a pretty fun uh, kind of construction. So there's, there's a couple different things we could do with this. So uh, one, we, hold on, I was trying to turn that chat room on so I could see it. So with this whole, uh, there's, I, I want to start with this thing at the end. Yeah. What does that thing do at the end of a verb? Yeah. The way somebody does something? Yeah, it's the way, right? Uh, and it could also mean like the place, right? The way or the place. And so on its own, it probably means place, right? And this is the same way you're going to see it is you're going to see the cut ye day could mean everywhere, but it could also mean all kinds. Like you say, the cut ye day kaudutli sek we kate. How can, can somebody translate that to cut ye de cow do de sec we cake? Dogs have different colors, many different colors. Yeah, dogs are all kinds of different colors. So that to cut ye de could mean 
all over the place, all different kinds, right? And that's related to this ye. And we know that because an attributive wouldn't work, but a perfective would certainly work. So we go up and we just sort of see a perfective here. <laughs> like we'll just grab the third person. It's probably easiest. So there's a couple different sort of steps we can take on sort of how to start using this ye in verbs. One would be awuni ye. So awuni ye is what we would expect. And, and, and once we do that, we're going to put the relational suffix at the end of the verb in ye. And that means the place where that verb happened. So for example, um, we could say uh, Wu went to jail because right in the middle of the road, that's the place where he shot that moose, right? And this is used a lot more in place names for raven, like, uh, you, 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 but it's also used uh, when you start working with the elders and they start naming things. How do you say playground? Ah, ash, kadut, yadi, ye. So you're usually going to get ah, then a verb with the fourth person a lot of times, and then the i, ye at the end. We asked them, how would you name a daycare? They said, adatki, ah, dultini, ye. That was a place where where children are watched, uh, and so there could be all kinds of things that you can construct. So if you want to say go out by where the, the barbecues are, and that might be ah, uh, wudutlitsiki yeah, and so that's how the yeah works. It's not used all the time, but it is, in, and maybe in stories too. You could say. We're going to go to, or, you know, in just day-to-day -day life. We'll go to that place uh, where we saw uh, those porpoises, right? So, you know, and then you could do that, too. You could say, ah, uh, would to a teeny, or maybe probably would to a teeny, yeah, we cheech. That place where we saw the porpoises. So that's how the yeah works. And then once you start adding some things, it's not about what the individual pieces mean. It's all about the combinations. So if you put ade and ade on its own, a a d high tone e, how do we interpret that? Towards it. Right? That's all it means is towards it. Right? But then when we grab that and then we do this verby ye thing, now we've got the way that the verb happened. So we're talking about the kind of qualities of it. Like a lot of times you'll say, kach ye ke, ade awa uni ye. That was great, the way that he shot it, right? And so you're going to have a verb, and that verb is describing that action. Kasiye, ade atwugudiye. He was walking around really weird. So that ade verbi ye is the way that verb happened. So the the way you might hear this one, ye awe. This is how our culture is taught to us, right? And so it's about the way that the verb happens. But when you put in the verb, that verb now has to push into what we call the potential. And the potential form means like a couple of things get activated. On its own, you can just say this, uqa'uni, or uqa'un. Uh, and uqa'un would be, he might shoot it. Usually you're going to say guash. You should say guash uqa'un. 
you might shoot it. Maybe he won't shoot it. There's no, he can't. He can't shoot it. And then there, you can get to the reasons why. That could mean, one, like it's, it's too far, he can't see it, uh, it's illegal, his gun, he doesn't have a gun. There could be all kinds of reasons, but on its own, that just means cannot do the verb. Okay, okay? Ah. Um. I have a question about um, the ade verbia. Um, so in my in the story that I was working on, you have um, I'm trying to f see where it is, but it's uh, instead of ade verb yeah, it's adach verbia. I was wondering if that was just a an error, or if that's another, if that means something else. I'm trying to find it where it is. That's a good, yeah, if, if you could find it and let me know. My guess, my instinct is that it's an error. It <laughs> be something new. But usually oh. you have odd day and then yeah, at, and then you just have those. At, and you can have a whole bunch of, like, there could be quite a few other things that go sort of in between that odd day and yeah. And we'll, we'll just keep looking for, I'll try and dig out some examples of them. And if you can find that one, my guess is it's probably something to just sort of listen closely to and then see if we might need to fix that. I found it. Oh. It's, um, plus and it's on, um, page three of, um, Oh, okay. It says, Tash Adach Duachaya. And I was just wondering if that was an error or if that. Oh, that's it. Okay, so this, let me, let me pull that up so we can look at it. It's probably an error. You, it's probably George said something and I wrote it down wrong, which is often the case. So let me find these guys. I guess this is a good time to sort of take a look at these. Oh, yeah. So uh, anybody else have this one? Well, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, one, two. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, so we'll... Uh, We'll kind of just start walking through this, and then we'll get to the way mistake claim and see what we can do about that. Uh, okay, so how does this title work? Hoots our shaggy ye shot. Shaw, the very root is to marry. Mm -hmm. um, Hoots is brown bear. Yeast is young, and then shot is a little woman. That's shot is usually combined for like a, a young girl who's pretty. Shot usually means um, there's these stages of life, like yaduk, shot. They can go ahead and get married. It's kind of, I think that's how I think of it anyways, from the Tlingit perspective. I didn't know about the... Um, conjugation of the verb, with like the awa. Oh, okay. Awa shayi, hoots awa shayi yi shat. How would we translate that? Anybody got a translation for us? Young woman. Young woman. Before the whole thing. We married. We married the bear. bear. Yeah, the young woman who married a bear. It's probably what you. And so once. What the awashayi is saying is it's saying, and there's different things that that could do. That could start marking time. That could do some other things, tying some verbs together. In this case, it's saying, hoots awashayi, ye shot. She's the one who did that thing that we're talking about. That's how it ties those things together. 
Okay. So it won't take us too long to get there. So I'm going to change the font. This is kind of a more technical font. I found a fun one that I like. That um, It's called Andica. It tends to handle the underlines and everything pretty well. And it looks fairly similar to handwriting without being overly like scripty, cursive-y. Uh, anybody want to read this first sentence? Okay. And uh, we're able to figure out a translation for that. Kind of got this. I was proud. It's like the one yeah. thing I about. Um, so, like, in the forest, Shiadahini is that, like, um, paternal aunt, or that's when I thought it was, like, okay. uh, sisters, and paternal aunts is one kind of translation I got. Okay. Um, Shiadahini? Yeah. Um, so, like, women were picking um, salmon berries. Yeah, so they, they were picking salmon berries. Shiyetahin uh, is a verb, means lots of okay. living things. So uh, lots of women. How would you, uh, what's the verb root in that one? Is it hain, which is like big? Is that what it was? Somebody tell me what the verb root is for shiyetahin. Ha. It's ha. And so this is there's something that happens with with when verb when open roots close, they will often change their shape, and that's just something we've got to get used to. Uh, a double, like if it ends with like a, like ausa e that that one would just close. It'd become een, I think. The double A, or the A's, is going to become E-I, and the double O's will become W-E-I. And so you'll see this a lot. So when you see Qoyn, uh, for Yanash Qoyn, or Qoyna, you would look up Qu. And you could say Yanash Qoyn. Uh, he or she is beginning to know it, getting to, getting to know it. Uh, or Yanash Qoyni, you would look up Ku. And so once you have hain, and, and you might sort of start, but a lot of times when you see one of those, you're going to recognize that it's, it's an open root that's been closed. Is that has high tone? Or no. Has is low tone? Yeah, the, the only high tone has is after a kinship term. Achilko has. Achat has. Or just talking about this group of people. Has aweh. Has has ayach was, you know. Uh, and, but if it's connected to one of the, pro, the verbal pronouns, object or subject, it'll always be low. Any other questions about that sentence? In the forest. Yeah, in the forest, at uh, women were picking berries. Salmon berries. Okay. Okay. Iti uh, Can I get somebody to read that? Okay. And I, I had trouble with this sentence, so um, I'll tell you <laughs> the maybes. <laughs> so, um, so we got their their berry baskets, and then that verb hasashayal shikik. The only place I could find anything was uh, with Jeff Lear, and I found a cow, a kawakik, and that was. Uh, 
were shaking it out, but it was related like to a cloth. So the only thing I could think of, and I may be dead wrong here, was that they, they kind of leveled the berry baskets, just shook them a bit to level it. And then ik day down towards the beach, as they, uh, they carried them. So this is a maybe I've got, they, they shook their berry baskets to level them and they carried them down toward the beach. That's, that should say a shake, a shake out a hick. That That's what a, I thought. <laughs> so one of the hardest things you're going to have is that I make a lot of typos. So that should say, ya has to cook, ya has a shake, a shake out. Asha yaukle hik ikte has a wajay. Chate hatmu. So once they, okay. As the cook ya has asha yaukle hik. When they had filled up their berries, ikte has a wajay. Yeah, they brought them down. Uh, from the land towards the beach, towards the village or whatever. Put them down. There, there's lots of ways to sort of look at that one. And kawajesh is pretty fun because uh, kawajesh is what you hear more often. It's to usually carry food, carry a whole bunch, all of one types of one type of thing, uh, to pack things in multiple trips, especially bringing them home. Awajesh is just changing the thematic prefix to really say, I picked up a basket by the lip, right, by the top, because it's, and that's how I'm lifting this sort of thing. And so Klingit is always sort of coming up with these ways to classify types of things. Okay. And so I will fix that typo. Get somebody to read the next sentence. Uh, I can. Gook. A car has to two yak a yahas our inni was on tleko shaya de haini has to utli kach kach ak shay ayout ayak kau de ku yak a. And I, I, I kind of guessed on this one, um, but I, I thought it's a car has to two yuk a ya has our inni what's on tayaku. I thought it was they were so happy they had picked many salmon berries, and then um. Has to utli kach kachak she ayakau de ku. I thought that was, um, they were so happy that they had picked so many salmon berries that their stomachs would overflow or something like that. Okay. Yeah, so that kau de ku, we can sort of. Just for fun, like, so when we encounter new verbs, we kind of look them up. So this one, we'll look up ku and see what we could find. So we don't really see, like, a kau de ku in there. Uh, and then this one, it, it's interesting. So a ka has to tu yake, a ka. So, and, and this is another thing that I think it tends to do. Like, when I, when I work with speakers, I notice that they tend to do this, like, so they were happy ab about it. So you'd use a ka, and, and so we might predict like a dot, and we might even say like this big long thing, dot has to to wu yak a. But for when you work with the speaker, some things that you'll realize is as they're translating, they'll tend to put that most important information right up front. They were happy about it. That's the most important part of the sentence then we can get to what they're happy about, right? And so that's one of the big differences, I think, between 
think it did in, in English sometimes is that just the word order and how things need to go and, and it tends to sort of you'll see the uh get put in there as sort of a placeholder and say they were happy about it and then I'll tell you what they're happy about uh, um, so there's a there's a suffix on there that's sort of like saying uh, because of or when and if or when this uh, verb happened, that's what the ni is doing at the end of it. So they were happy that their baskets were full of lots of salmon berries. And this one was kind of tricky, and it might be something that I might go back to the speakers and just see if we need to finesse it a little bit. Um, just as far as specifying the hus and, and there might be to sort of, a, might be something that you could put in there to clarify, although, you know, the elders, they, they always know, but sometimes as we sort of go, you know, the, the history of this book and, and all these little books is we found them as part of a Head Start project that never been finished, and we thought, well, we'll finish it, but we'll do it in Tlingit. But then the story is already written down in English, and so we're usually translating sentence by sentence into Tlingit with two elders who may not necessarily know these stories, but they know Tlingit very well. So if, if you wanted to sort of add a little bit more of sort of specifying information for the reader, Aka has to tuwu yake ya has awe inni waskan kleko shi so the hastukh I would probably say maybe has to or maybe has to something like that because it's really what they're saying is they're really happy that they could go they picked so many berries that they were going to uh, fill up people's bellies. And so maybe the other way that could take care of that is changing this has du ka. A ka has du tu wu ya ke ya has awa inni was khan keku shi ya dehini ka ku tli kach kach ak shi a ya kau de ku. And the second I probably, I'll probably go through and get rid of that. It might be, it might serve like some sort of clarifying purpose, but it might be one of these things that we call a false start, where an elder they'll just say it twice in a row because they're just as they're, it's just coming together. Any other thoughts or questions about that one? For Ala Indi, how would you find the verb root in that one? Yeah. So what would we look for for Awa Indi? From the glottal stop over. Yeah, and so we should, so we'll, we'll, we start to recognize n as like a suffix because there's that double n there, which is pretty unusual. Mm -hmm. And then that allows us to see, and then once we see like where the glottal stop is, we should know that's the start of the verb root. Okay. So we're going to look up in. We always start by looking long and low. Mm -hmm. so we go to in. And then I think the quickest way is to go into the uh, story niche dictionary and you go down and you see uh, they're probably not killing them, mm -hmm. they're picking them into a container. Okay. I get a reader for the next sentence. <coughs> Utih a da yo jene a jidah has wood wood Okay. And what did we come up with for that one? Was it started from the word? Yeah, so wutih a wutih a da ye jene ye. They, they worked real hard on it. So, so is difficult or hard. Uh, it looks like uh, it's missing. Is that a typo? <laughs> yeah. 
again. Okay, where am I? This whole thing's going to be orange. How am I going to figure it out? Okay. So, wutich adayejini. Uh, it was difficult work. Uh, they worked hard on it would be another way uh, you could sort of interpret that. And then what about ajidachas wudichwek? From it, they were tired? Yeah, from it. And so uh, when we look at this one too, again, how do the concepts work in Shingit, right? We should know uh, G on its own. And how would we translate G, J-E-E? -E. Work or like... What's that? Work. Uh, that would be ye jene. Mm -hmm. It's G on its own. It comes from the word for hand. Right? Jin is hand. Okay. It, these are all related because they, and they're, it's, it's good because jene is in there. And this is how we're seeing how they tie together. So jin is probably the starting point. And that's a hand or an arm. G is possession. Right? So this is, and then jin, the short version, goes on the front of a verb to talk about doing something with the hands. Right? And so you go from uh, ye wu ne, it happened, to ye ji wu ne, somebody worked on it. So now we've just changed the, we've changed the meaning of the verb. So G is one of these relational bases, means it needs to belong to something, part one. Part two, we could put a suffix on there. So it, this is, G can, has a bunch of different forms. G wu, to be located in the possession. Uh, G yes, this is for your, for your possession. That's a phrase that would you, you would use if you're giving someone a gift and you want it to be clear. This is for you to have. Uh, could mean we need context because you could say, nah, maybe I'll give you a cup of coffee, right? Nah, this is from your mother. She sent it over, right? And, and so sometimes in language, we're trying to communicate stuff really fast. Uh, could be, uh, it, it it came in, but I couldn't grab it. That could you could use jinach for something like that. You could say hajinach, hajinach kud, zigid. We we had it, and we lost it. It, it came. It went out of our possession. The jinach they would use for a lot of things. So they're talking about losing our language or our culture. Jich uh, would be like. Repeatedly give putting into the possession, G day towards the possession, ah, jeet, t, bring it to my possession, right? So then that's how this is working, sort of at the language level. The conceptual level, you can always talk about something, right? You could say, I walked. I'm walk, I've been walking for a long time. That's, and from that, I'm tired. So this is how you would say, like, work made me tired. Uh, right? So that, it's like this thing made me this way. And so this is another really, really cool way to use that. Because you could say, like, you're, you've exhausted me, and you could say stuff like that. But this is more like doing that thing made them tired. So that's how the jidach is working. Can you use that for emotional states of being? Like, my mother gave me this jidach ach to wu or something like that? Yeah, From you could that. say a jidach ach to wu Another one they'll use is jid, like under, under the weight of it. And that one's that one's pretty heavy too, because you could say like on the two ye ye ti ach yes a jigito ach tu yinik. They're mad at me, and the burden of that makes me sad. And so this is again, we're just learning how to do more complex things with language, with how these little parts tend to work, and 
jidakh is, is a fun one, especially like you just say something and then you say, a jidakh blank. And from, it's like, it's almost like that action gave them this. Okay. Subsequently, yeah. Uh, who wants to read this one? Okay. Uh, um, the the inland dictionary had a, I guess it's a relational Jika, uh, coming his or her way so that it's attainable. Um, so kind of guessing uh, they've um, uh, basically what a kind of a rough translation uh, they have enough and they're happy about it or uh, uh, through uh, what was attained they they're happy about that. Oh, yeah, and uh, then they got ready to go. But I, it was the, the beginning that I wasn't Pastor uh, Jitana. Oh, you're mu muted. <laughs> Sheesh. Uh, okay. So I'll have to check that jikanach and make sure because it might be jikayanach. Um, and I'll, and I'll... That's... Go ahead. That's what I thought it was because it has the um, has the jikanach was a T. So that one, that I'll, one, I'll double check. Um, Jakaya nach would be more than a person could carry, or or maybe too much of something. They're they're not because you could say, "Ach jakaya nach away adachwatleshati." That's too heavy for me to pick up. Uh, but I think jakanachusati means it's enough. It's enough. When you put those together, when they felt good about how much they had, when you know, it's basically they had enough, when it, it had become enough, that's how this wusati works. Like it had become enough for them, they were happy about it. Kekuchde uh, is then, kuchde is. Uh, to return, you guys hear me now? Am I just reading this late? Uh. Okay. And then kuchde is to return, and hasat wuhun. Wuhun is a verb to prepare, to get ready to go. Right? Okay. Any other thoughts or questions on mm. that first page? Um, I had a question about the tone on Kuchte. So I'd seen it high tone, high tone over the U before versus the, the um, directional. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Kuchte is what I would expect. Kuch, as far as I know, should be, should always be low. But that's probably other typos that I probably made myself. Good, good as cheese. Ah, but we'll we'll check. We'll see how Zeosh has it uh, documented. And so, the verbal structure handbook is something. Uh, 
you guys should have and familiarize yourself with. Uh, it gives overall information about Tlingit, uh, quite a bit of linguistic info packed in here. Uh, but then it starts getting into, here's suffixes that can go on to uh, a noun. Here are some base sort of universal directional things. Uh, here's a whole bunch of relational uh, nouns. And then what we're looking for is uh, Here's adjectives, pronouns, uh, and then we start getting into uh, verb modes a little bit, and then all the different components of the verb, with the top one being the farthest left to the, the bottom one being the farthest right. And then we get in here, and then it shows us a whole bunch of different examples and, and what we might call them uh, in, in English. And we have kuch and kuch here, and those should both be uh, low tone as far as I know whenever, whenever you see them. So the kuch is to return, and the kuch is to run aground. And they're both uh, directional things that you're going to see. And, and they're going to affect the way that things go. Oh, there it is right there. So, huh, maybe it is. Yuck, eh. So that does go, I guess that does go high tone when you put the day on it. But I'll double check that and see. Cheesh. Cheesh. Ah. Iti ah. Naski ah. No, oh, I already see some things. Okay, who wants to read this one? Cook. Kutsayit Yahasna Adi Kena Shak Kutsana Budi Ha Yantautli. Yes. So what I had for that was um they're walking on a on a bear trail on a game game trail on a bear trail and uh, one young woman stepped on where a bear went to the bathroom. Yeah, well, so uh, gunnaguti is a nice way to say poop. Uh, there's two other ways to say it, hot. Uh, so you could say hoots hotly, but we generally uh, respect the bear a lot, so we don't usually say that. Italy would be another way to say it, uh, but those, I guess those are leaning towards like cussing, so I guess it would be like, would be probably shit, and hot would probably be crap, and gun naguti or gun de naguti, either one would be poop. And ka, yan kaudli, yes, yan kaudli, yes, is like to completely Step on it. Gun nakuti is like a kind of a euphemism. Yeah, because and it's related to like gunde He or she went to the bathroom. Gunde kukwaku. I'm gonna go to the bathroom, and then gunde nakuti is how you. Say, that's how a lot of people say it, and that'll mean like just poop. What does nakuti mean? It's to walk. And so goot is it comes from nagoot. I like it. Okay. Nagoot, like I think you're literally saying uh, he or she went outside here. And then um, and you'll see this in the Raven stories too. I think we looked at Raven and King Simon at one point. He said, Ah away gande wugut aksha akshat kaltak to ashgu we so he was sending these little birds who helped him drag this fish, this king salmon up the beach to go get scum cabbage. And when they came back, he said, where'd you get this from? They said, oh, right over there. And they said, oh, my wife goes to the bathroom over there. You should go get new skunk cabbage way over that mountain. And then, of course, he cooked the fish and ate it. Okay. Uh, next one. 
Who wants to read it? What's that? Like. Kuts gande nagudi ka yan kahyas kus kau jihid akah kuchde yanach yeudigit yanach ye iskit. Oh, okay. I didn't realize I had two sentences. Okay, so uh, what do you guys get out of that? Something like, um, as she is stepping, her foot slipped on where the bear went to the bathroom. Um, she fell down backwards. Uh, yeah, so, down. yeah, hoots gandhi nagu dika yan kashyas. So, uh, and, and so you'll notice too, like, they don't always have to have all the specific, you know, like, when at the time then and so hoots gandhi nagu dika yan kashyas khus her foot slid across and so uh you is a verb root meaning to be slippery and then like kaushakh is where you you'll hear that usually for you know someone to slip but this is getting really specific like her foot slipped and so there's different ways you could sort of interpret how this is going uh, if you were to interpret it back into english you could you could say uh, as she stepped in the, the, the bear poop, that one foot slid a car along it, and she fell backwards. So, kuch means to return, but it also means backwards. Like if you're standing in line for coffee and it's tourist season and somebody's nose is like right at the back of your head, because sometimes people stand in lines differently in different places and if we all spoke clinket you could turn and say stand back right and same with uh, if you've got some kids and they're looking at something and you wanted them to just step back a little bit because you were going to do something and you didn't want uh, let's say we're cleaning like a, a seal and and we thought maybe something was going to splatter or whatever um, Stand back, y'all stand back. So kuch could also refer to, it's a directional term, which could mean to, to just back up a little bit. And in this case, if you say uh, de, uh and then yanach yodzigit, so like the yanach is like, she, she just fell completely over, right? And then yanach, uh, and then when we, this, when the yanach and yodzigit, uh, we're really talking about the basket now, because she could fall. But when we say yanach yodzigit, yanach yiskit, iskit, uh, this basket fell over, right? Because there's, there's different ways, too, to talk about knocking something over, throwing something over, spilling something. And it just depends on the types of motions. You generally get, uh, you're going to get like shubuchich, like to throw it or you're going to get this skeet, which is wood to get, which is for something to fall. So in this case, uh, I would probably interpret that as she slipped and the basket spilled over, maybe over her back, if we really want to get descriptive of it. Uh, it spilled, and, and she might have fallen as well too, but the, probably the most important information it's giving us is that the contents spilled out of the basket. Okay, so I want to read the next one. Okay. Kagu Kadach Yach Kaljifin Kaya 
Yannach Yivtiket. Yeah, that's just she fell over it. Sorry. Yeah, so she fell. Yannach Yiskit. She fell. Kuchte Yannach Yiskit. When she, you know, when she fell back, Ya Anna Yantek Taku Kadach Yach Kauchachin. What do we got there? Ya Anna Yan is a uh, verb. Mm. Let's check it out. Let's see. You would say go long and low, though? Mm -hmm. So you think like yawn, perhaps? Could be. It could be ya. Ya on the yen tail. Ya on the yen tail. It was like 10 minutes. <laughs> Is the tleq tied to the next verb? Maybe. Tleq to kalku kadach yach kawjachin. Yeah, probably. But I was, they, these, these, the ya and the yen could be tied together with the... Oh, I know what that is. Is it Yeah, it's back. Oh. Carry on back? Yep. Yeah. So same, and so... There are some verbs that they don't change their shape when they close, and so ya would be one of them. Um, so there it is to carry on the back. So in this case, ya anayan kek. It doesn't always mean carry on the back, it just means to pack something. So, pukhde yanakhye iski, when she fell back, ya anayan kek. The berries she was carrying, kaku kadach yach kaujachin. Then we get kaujachin would be to spill. Okay. Any questions about any of that stuff so far? We'll probably just end on this page, and we'll, we'll come back and we'll start doing this. I know we talked about some conversational things, but we'll we'll figure out a rhythm, I guess. Maybe we'll talk about it after we get through this page. Want to? Can we get someone to read this one? Sure. Uh, to cut ye ga wu ti. Um, all of it or just all of it. Uh, I don't know ye ga. Yeah, so to cut at would be all, or to cut tek, we would need some kind of noun in there. But when we get to cut ye, that's all over the place, or all different kinds of, all, it could, and this is where we see that ye is how or where. It's a, it's a place or how, uh, the way something is done. So you could say to cut ye ka wu ti. And I'm not exactly sure why there why it's a, because you could say chastikat yeh, chastikat ye de, chastikat ye dach, chastikat ye ka. Sort of like they just spilled all over the place, and that's probably why it's a, because a is usually to go to go after something, uh, and so it might be implying some kind of motion. But chastikat ye de would be like to go all over the place or to be all kinds of different ways. Uh, would be just moving all over the place. From all over the place. So you could say, um, People from all over the place got together. 
And so that's how that the cut ye is working. So here, yeah, here's the culprit that I think we were talking about. Kesh adach. I'll have to listen to the tape. I'm guessing I didn't write it down right. It, I would expect it to be hesh adet ye. Um, but I'll, unfortunately, I can't check. I'll check with Marge, perhaps, because this could be tying it to the specific instance, like, so adakh would be from that. So there's aqa away, adakh away, aitkh away. Those are very similar concepts. Aqa away would be following that in terms of, like, this thing happened, then this happened. Adakh away would be sort of like following that, but sort of after that, which is usually sort of a tying together a little bit more sort of cause and effect. And then a itch away would be following that, which is sort of saying these things were sequenced somehow. Uh, and it's a real subtle difference between those ones. Uh, but I'll have to check, because it could be uh, because I probably just missed the ade. There should, I think there's probably an ade that needs to be in there. And I think you could say, they couldn't be eaten after that. Goodness, cheese. Oh. I hope all these kids realize how much proofreading we've had to do. <laughs> hey, somebody read. Gook, Natun. Khatawa des. Gook. Flop to Uyakuzi gay, Kugu Kawu Hut. Hoot Gunde Nagudi, Hu Yakoji Hin. Yuck, eh? Play cock in a coa. Ah, oh, the um, the bear poop. Uh, among among them, she fell. Is it fall or stepped? It, it spilled. Spilled. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it spilled all over the bear poop. <laughs> okay. Cheese. How do we translate that? Anger. She got angry. Yeah, she was. And so again, we've got Ajit and we saw Ajidach. So in this case, uh, Ajit on yachyati, which is interesting to say yachyati, because you could also say dutuwuch on yeyati, um, uh, and I'll have to check and make sure that that's what he said. But ajit would be like she was mad about it, right? And so it's not like ajidachat would dehuet. That one seems to fit better. Like that thing gave me being tired. Ajit. Uh, she's giving anger to that thing. And, and so we, we just sort of see the subtle ways that these things uh, tend to work. And so uh, you could say she was angry at him. You would say, do yis, do tu wuchan yeyati or yachati. Um, so that's how that one's working. Okay. Uh, I guess my, you know, this is in the story, but uh, so kheka is truly, hishikei is horrible, and hoots is brown bear. I won't make anybody read that one because it's kind of culturally inappropriate, and we, and we know that, and so, and we read the story and we tell the story, but just make sure that you know if you say this in the forest, like that's when the bad things happen. 
And that's what this story is prefaced. That's what the story says. There's other versions of this story uh, where she says, uh, big basket butt. And um, in other contexts, those things can be really funny, but we've got to make sure that we know and that we teach everybody that you never ever talk to an animal like this, especially uh, a brown bear. And, and I want to say, working in the interior this summer, there are some speakers there like Kakli Norman James. And if you had a story like this, he would just shut the whole project down. He'd say, I don't want to do this. He, he just, he wouldn't even probably, I mean, that's my guess, because we had some things where that were just not even really making fun of a bear. There was just these cartoon animals for these kind of language exercises. And one of them was a bear, and he made them change it to a different animal because they don't even like to talk about him at all. So it's just a uh, good thing scenario. Uh, 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 she just says uh, big game. She, yeah, she, yeah, yeah, big game. Uh, sometimes there's another, they'll say um, yetzinate, which is a contraction of yetzin and at, which is like a living thing. That's another name that it has in the interior. Uh, it seems to be a little different on the coast sometimes, but it's just something we should keep in mind and just keep in our, uh, especially if you guys are going out hiking and stuff, if you just keep saying the name of those guys, they're going to come. And that's just, that's the Shingit way of thinking of it. Even when they would, I watched a recording of a speaker, uh, I think it was Lily White maybe, who said that you know, before they went into the woods, they would talk to uh, these things. And she would say, Hashishkuhas, that's how she referred to them. And so that's the same word we use when we say our ancestors. So that's, there's some really key conceptual things there. That once and so I remember we we're going uh, hunting and this guy just kept telling all these bear stories and I was just I was really uncomfortable and so then we, we I talked to them before we went into the woods but it's really good if you're going out into the woods I would recommend you don't even say their name you just say hey maybe that's that maybe there's that thing that lives around here maybe there's that big thing that's around here. Maybe there's that living thing. Oh, look, there's, that looks like, you know, and there's different ways to talk around it. And what you're doing, we were wondering too, why is that plus I That's a good question. I think because it's a state. Um, so same thing. And so you could say, where you I think they should stay plus I. Uh, that's how I hear them, uh, because state verbs have to be plus I to be that way. And so once when you're adding that relational suffix, you're really just sort of turning it into an adjective. But what we've seen, like especially yuck a, that one, you, you can't. You could say ak eh, but that's a diff, That's a that's an actual adjective. You can make a verb into an adjective, and usually you're just adding an I to a, a, a state verb. So you'd say, that, that dirty guy, right? And so that's, that's why, it's because it's a state verb that's already reached that state, so you wouldn't want to make it minus I, which is something you also see sometimes with uh, some of the subordinate clauses. Is We were trying it out with speakers, and I don't think they really liked us to say um, they wanted they didn't really like it when it when it switched and so for other things we do see it switch the big-eared guys and so that's another way to uh, 
talk about them. Okay. Okay. A few more. Uh -oh. I'm not going to have time for other stuff. How do we translate that? Why is it people Uh -huh. Is that why do they walk there? Yeah, that was this one's pretty interesting. So one nach saya to u anach at kuka at yeh. Um, so it's interesting because the sort of I think the second part is just implied and so I guess the literal translation would be why there where the people go where the people go right but then that is probably yet another way to say kind of I mean there's no gunde in there but that's what she's talking about um, at would be anach at like people are walking around there is really what she's saying and so why why do they have to do that where the people like to where the people go where the people walk has a jinak ya has to two has a jinak ya has to oh I see what's going on I think those need to be one sentence. There it is. Why in the place where the people go, do they always let go or drop their poop? And so again, there's, there's ways to be really direct about stuff like that. Um, I think the thing it preference is usually not to really, like a shish is the verb for to poop, but then you you know, instead you're gonna say has a jinak, and that's a repetitive form, ji and that should also be that should be one word. I gotta do some work on that. I'll try and remember. A jinak would be like has a jinak. They always. They're always letting it go. They're regularly dropping it. Has to gundi nagudi. Go ask shech chakut yede has kuwa uwu ya dach. Go ask kushe is like I wish. Chakut yede has kuwa uwu ya dach. There's a lot of times when you see this go ask kushe. You'll see like a uh, kind of a prohibitive version, like I hope it's that way. But it's not always the case. We see fluent speakers who just sort of drop that second sort of thing. And you could usually you could say and then just whatever your verb phrase is. And you're saying, I hope it, so you know, I wish. I wish they would just go live away from the people, which she's saying some horrible stuff, and that's why bad things are going to happen. Uh, let them just go to that place. Uh, again, a hoard, there's a hoardative verb there. Uh, let them go there. Let them walk over there. Ah ye has ye de. And again, a little bit of a variation, but let them be somewhere else. So that's collectively what she says, uh, which is a dangerous spot to leave off on with this story. But this is helpful. Um, basically, the process I work with, I worked with George and Marge, and we would just 
translate all these stories and I'd go in and write them down, but inevitably it would make tons of mistakes. So this helps, um, and I know the proofreading process is sometimes crazy because then you're trying to find these things that's written down wrong, but um, Dana Dujit has a word he where at your high catushi de car. A joy tesach to our school. Janich aya ye jitu nay where hook dart. A joy ye that the ye jacar to nay whoosh tin. A car awake at the year. Was Naskatushu hook. Yes, sing it you a tongue tin. Cassatina ha o tea wait let her you a tongue Akaha Hayetki Yehasakur Satin Singit Ayakut Zeti, where Yaka Yukakah a Dutki Jigis Yeweyak to us of Kanach Ayat at the Katway Hain Ah Haku has to G day Ayakah to tea, where Huk Gunnish Cheesh. Okay, so we'll come and certainly mark your questions, your thoughts. Uh, you know, that's the goal is we're learning and we're also fixing and so I really appreciate that and I appreciate that we're going to have these books out there sometime uh, before too long. We've got to find a way to publish them but we can talk about that some other time. Is this an ongoing kind of assignment? Just keep grinding away at our stories that we're working on? Yeah, I would say let's think of this as probably our midterm is just work on this as much as you can. And then for your final, I would like you to make something. And it doesn't have to be this, but it could be something else. But it should be something with some pretty high level language. Uh, and then we can, we'll talk through the semester about what it should be. Um, it could be a book, it could be a speech, it could be a video, it could be a lesson, it could be. I, I really encourage us to either make things that are just really fun or make things that are really helpful, or make things that are just really interesting. So for the last uh, 10 minutes, I think we'll, well, let's start here. Maybe we'll start here. I don't know if I'll be able to get through it in time. So last semester in Intermediate Clinket, we did a thing on eating. And I know we talked about eating, and we we're we are going to talk on Wednesday about our day-to-day -day routine. So start thinking about things that you might think about. Day-to-day -day stuff that you want to share with us in Klingit. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'll check that high tone. It might be, it might be, it might be low. I'll, I'll check that out. Uh, so ate yeah. So I, I took this and I, I was just sort of showing some uh, eating verbs and cooking verbs, and I thought, oh, well, we can actually make a big, a big sort of lesson about this and start talking about how do we how do we manipulate verbs, right? There's really two things that we do for verbs, uh, with verbs. One is we change it for person. Who's doing it? Who is it happening to? Those are two things that we could change and that we learn how to change uh, sort of regularly. So we've got these lists of objects, and these are the ones that it happens to. They always go right there at the front of the verb. And there's the ones who do the verb, and those always go a little bit further in, always right before the classifier. Right, so this is, they're always in the same spot, but sometimes when they add together, they kind of, they jump around each other a little bit. But this is this is the order of things. And then you're going to change the verb for mode. And when you're changing it for mode, something might pop up in the pre-verb, like klesh, or ye, or ke, or ya. Uh, there's there might be some conjugation prefixes, like y, the perfective, u, uh, the irrealis, ga, or or the conjugation prefixes or these modal types of things. 
and they might, then they'll come in certain combinations for certain types of verbs. The classifier might switch. Typically, it's going from uh, minus i to plus i. The stem will change, and when we start shifting the verb, and it's going to be either short and high, long and high, or long and low. We might add a suffix on there, but those are more, they're less common than the prefix. Usually you're doing repetition, but there's a couple others too, like ha is to miss something. Uh, like you shot and you missed. And then there's pre-verb, post-verb stuff, but that's usually just like nooch or new gene. Uh, you might find some other ones out there, but those ones are by far the most common. So when we start thinking about continuing to sort of look at verbs, what we want to master is the imperfective, perfective, and future. So the imperfective, you're describing something that's, that's in a process of happening, right? The perfective means we're talking about it totally just in terms of whether or not it has or has not happened. And then the future is going to or it's not going to. So a couple things we think about, there's no required preverb for the imperfective or the perfective. Sometimes things will pop up in the preverb like yay, but the yay with the high tone is different. It just means like this, right? Thusly so, right? For the future, you have to know the conjugation class of a verb because all of the g conjugation verbs will have k in front of it. So it'll be k-kwak a, k um, and on and on. And then the q will always have ye. So you'd say ye a uh ye ik and that's what those are doing, is they are tied to the conjugation type and to the verb mode, okay? For the... Sorry, no, we're short. Sorry, I didn't mean it. Okay. For the perfective, you're going to have the y, that's the perfective marker. And for the future, you're going to have g, u, qa. And it's not totally important that we understand, I, I think g and qa, they don't mean anything. I gotta bring this up a little bit. There should be an underline on there, sorry. Good. There. So the g and the q in this case are purely modal things. This just means we're we're turning these on in a certain combination to say we're talking about future. The U in between them means the verb specifically did not happen. So that's what it's specifying. The irrealis pops up to say, didn't happen. Okay. Classifier will be uh, minus I in the imperfective except for state verbs, plus I in perfectives that are positive, and then minus i in all futures, positive or negative. You had a question about that? Um, my question was for the preverb. Um, that was the lesson last week you were saying how to figure out what the preverb is just based on looking at it. Well, so last week we were doing preverbs with their motion preverbs. That's like a totally, it's a little bit different than this. So that, that motion, and so whenever you have a motion verb, you look to the, pre, the motion preverb to say, what's the conjugation class going to be? For, for all non-motion verbs, it has just an, a built-in conjugation class that you have to remember. So when you look at a verb uh, like this, you'll see O, there's an object, S, there's a subject, Zero, it's a zero group classifier. Ha is the verb root. The number one means that there's another ha verb root out there. Do anybody anybody know what it is? 
To paddle. To paddle. And then in parentheses, you're going to get zero uh, act. And then it should say verb, and this will say transitive. And so this, uh, it's a zero conjugation class. It's an act verb, and it's transitive. So transitive means there's both an object and a subject. That means you, you cannot remove the object of the subject. They have to be in there. Once you see them in the theme, you know that they have to be there. And so, and then it tells you here what this verb means. So then we can go through and we have a command form of it. Ha! And that means eat it. We have a prohibitive form. Don't eat it. Acha! An imperfective. She or he is eating it. She or he is not eating it. Awacha, she or he ate it. Kesh awucha, she or he didn't eat it. Akwacha, she or he will eat it. Kesh akwacha, she or he won't eat it. So what we're trying to do is master all of these modes. These are the these and the other ones are great, but you really have to have a handle on these to be able to use the language. Then you start getting into these uh, potentials and uh, repetitives and habituals and, and stuff like that. And, and, and we'll dabble into that stuff as well. But really, I, one of the things I want to focus on is just making sure we've got a good grasp of this stuff so that when we see any verb, we should be able to take a really good guess on how to put it into any of these different modes. Because these are um, you know, communicating stuff right away do it, don't do it, uh, communicating what's going on right now, basically, doing it, not doing it, because this can also mean, like, does it regularly, right? So you could, in some cases, you could say, like, you know, Fruit Loops, haha, I eat Fruit Loops, right? Doesn't mean I'm eating them right now. Uh, did it, didn't do it, will do it, won't do it. So what we're going to do on... Wednesday is we'll keep looking at these and we'll look at a bunch of examples for a bunch of different verbs that have to do with eating and cooking food. We're going to pay attention to some things like what does the prefix look like? And then the other thing, the other side of that, what's the stem? So we see here, short high, long high, short high, short high, long high, short high, long high, long low. Outside of these two right here, the imperfectives, the rest is all pretty predictable, right? And so we'll also talk about how to predict what the stem is going to be by looking at how stem variation works. And so that's, that's kind of my goal, I think, for a little while this semester is we'll, we'll do some translating. We'll try it. Wednesday we'll start with just sort of talking to each other and thinking it. Then we'll look at continuing to translate and then doing a flash sort of grammar thing 10 to 15 minutes towards the end of class. And, and if you guys want to try something different, we could try something different. If you have questions, certainly bring them and, and we'll try and look at some things. Uh, and we'll just keep spotting uh, how things could be uh, a little bit different in, in these texts that we've got to sort of edit. You can Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. Ah, can you see? Can you see? Ah, can you see? Shika Tustin Cha. And I'll share. Uh, I'll put these all these things on our on our website so we can look at them and you can have copies. Do you have audio of these stories? Yeah. That'd be really cool. I got. I'll have to paste them together because they're not. They're, we're us. We're talking through, talking through, and suggest it, and we'll talk it through some more. So that's a good project that was to go through and isolate the finalized 